Good evening, everybody. Erev Tov. I hope everyone had a wonderful, inspiring Yom HaTzma'ud. 72 years to the state of Israel. What a bracha. What a bracha. And uh, the amount of progress and uh, growth that we've seen in these 72 years is nothing less than miraculous. Bezrat Hashem will see even greater progress in the future. And hopefully it will be in a, a peaceful environment. Uh, we're going to talk about Pasha Kedoshim. And the Pasha opens with the words, Daber el kol adat b'nei Yisrael, v'yamat alehem, kedoshim t'inu, ki kadosh ani adonai aloeichem. And the sedra is book-ended with a pasuk that uh, recollects the, the first pasuk in the parasha, v'yitem li kedoshim, you shall be holy unto me, ki kadosh ani Hashem, <clears throat> for I am holy, says Hashem, and I'll separate you from the nations to be to be mine, to be unto me. The uh, mitzvah of Kedoshim to you is uh, emphasized uh, in our parsha and in other parshiot as well. And you would imagine that Kedoshim to you would be counted as one of the Taryag mitzvot, one of the 613 mitzvot in the Rambam. <clears throat> but it's not there, it's simply not there. And uh, the question is why, why not? Why is, is Kedoshim not counted as one of the 613 mitzvot? Uh, Kedoshim to you is not the only mitzvah that's not counted. To give you an example, um, Yeshua Eretz Yisrael is not counted. Uh, and that has led many to the opinion that Rambam held that Yishuv Eretz Yisrael is not uh, a mitzvah midiraita. Uh, there are some some who say that uh, according to the Rambam it's only midirabanan. Uh, but Rav Salavechut Zatzal uh, had a different explanation. He said that the mitzvah of Yishuv Eretz Yisrael, uh, very appropriate now for, for Yom Ha'atzmaut, the mitzvah of Yishuv Eretz Yisrael is not a mitzvah like all other mitzvot. It's different in the sense that it is a mitzvah that contains many mitzvot. It's a mitzvah kolelet. Many, there are many aspects to each of Eretz Yisrael, a specific particular mitzvah. For example, uh, part of Yish of Eretz Yisrael is minui shoftim. Shoftim v'shoftim piten lecha b'chol sharecha. This is part of Yishu Eretz Yisrael. Tzedek, Tzedek Yudov, Laman Tich Yev Yorashta Ta'aretz. So again, the pursuit of Tzedek is an integral part of Yishu Eretz Yisrael. Or the Kibush of the Shiva Ha'amim, uh, the conquest of the seven nations, is part and parcel of Yishu Eretz Yisrael. Or the appointment of a king, or the eradication of Amalek, or the building of the Beit HaMikdash, all of these are ingredients or components of Yishuv Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, the Rambam did not count Yishuv Eretz Yisrael as one of the 613, because it is a super mitzvah. It's not less than a mitzvah, it's a super mitzvah, and therefore is a category unto itself, and not one of the 613. And I believe that the same may be said of Kedoshim Tihiyu. Kedoshim Tihiyu is not a singular mitzvah with only one component. There's many components. And because of that, Rambam did not count Kedoshim as, as a mitzvah, one mitzvah amongst the 613. Which really leads us to ask, what is the nature of Kedoshim Tihiyu? Or perhaps a more fundamental question is, what is the meaning of Kedusha? What is Kedusha? Uh, we often think of Kedusha going hand in hand with Tahara. Uh, but Kedusha is not Tahara. And I think we need to understand the difference between the two. What is Kedusha and what is Tahara? 
the the subject of Uma and Tahara uh, is found in the previous parashiot that we have read in the recent weeks. For example, in Parsha Shmini, we have the, the Tuma, the impurity that is acquired by coming in contact with a nevela, uh, arcus of a dead animal, or a sheretz, uh, coming in contact with a dead rodent. Uh, such contact leads to uh, Tuma. In Parsha Tazria, we have the Tuma of the Yoledet, the woman who gives birth, as well as the greater part of the is uh, Metzora, uh, the great uh, form of impurity. And in Pasha Metzora itself, we have the Zav and, and the Balkeri. Uh, these are seminal emissions coming from a man. We have the Zava and the Nida from a woman. Uh, also, these are all different forms of Tuma. And what they have in common is that Tuma is a, a spiritual impurity that is in some way connected to death, to death. Uh, for example, uh, the contact with a dead animal or dead rodent is certainly uh, Tuma. Uh, the the Mitzora is, uh, is a living death. It's part of the body is decaying, dying uh, on a living person. Uh, the the zav and the zava and the nida and the zava and the zav, these are all uh, life potential which is leaving the body of a person, and all of this creates tuma, spiritual impurity. One might ask, but isn't the yoledet an exception to the rule? After all, the woman who gives birth. She's bringing life into the world. Where, where's the association with death? And I think we have to understand that in the sense that in terms of her own body, a pregnant woman has two lives, her own and that of her fetus. Those are two lives. When she gives birth, the fetus leaves her body and now she's left with only her life. So, of course, it's not death, it's giving birth to new life. But if you think of it in terms of her body, there is a diminution in life substance. And that's what creates the tuma. That's what creates the impurity. Uh, needless to say, the, the most severe form of tuma is that of tumat met, coming in contact with a dead body. That is called the aviavota tuma. The antidote to Tuma is through water. Uh, water, mayim, chayim. Water is a symbol of life. And therefore, uh, in some cases, one uh, who's goes to the mikvah, and that is sufficient. Or some forms of Tuma, such as the Zav, requires mayan, a spring of living water, mayim, chayim. Uh, or in the, most, in the exceptional case of the Tamei Met, one who comes in contact with the dead, there the, uh, the Tahara, the purification comes about through the Mechatat, which is the sprinkling <clears throat> of the water mixed with the ashes of the red heifer on the third day and the seventh day of his purification, and then going to Mikvah. In all the forms of Tahara, <clears throat> water is involved, and water <clears throat> being the source of life, mayim chayim. So therefore, to summarize, tahara is the purification of the tuma, and the tuma is impurity because of its association with death. And the Torah, of course, emphasizes life. Eit chayim hi lamachazikim ba. And the Torah wants tahara and not tuma. Um, Following the portion of Mitzora, we have Hashat Achremot, which will be the Shabbat, Bezrat Hashem. <clears throat> and what is Achremot? The beginning of Achremot talks about spiritual uh, purity. And by what means? By the unique means of Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur itself is a day that leads to 
Tahara. As the Pasuk reads, Kivayom hazeh, Yechaper alechem, Letahar etchem, Mikoch atotechem, Lefnei Hashem titaru. So the Tahara, the spiritual purification, comes about through Yom HaKippurim. The end of Parshat Afremot deals with uh, another form of Tuma, and that is in the form of spiritual immorality. The laws pertaining to incest and adultery and other forms of sexual behavior are called a to'eva, called an abomination, and this is how Pashat Achrimot ends. So we have from Pashat Shrini, through Tazria, Torah, and Achrimot, subject of Tahara, the subject of spiritual purification. Now we come to Pashat Kedoshim. Kedoshim tiyu ki kadosh ani asher ani asher So now we ask the question, what does the Torah mean when it says Kedoshim tihiyu? Rashi tells us that the beginning of Kedoshim is juxtaposed to the end of Achrimot, and by so doing, the Torah has given us a definition of Kedoshim Tihiyu. Says Rashi, Kedoshim Tihiyu, have a prushim min ha'arayot, min ha'avera. Separate yourself from incest and immorality. Rashi, where does Rashi get this idea from? Gets it from the juxtaposition of the beginning of Kedoshim to the end of, with the end of Achrimot. And the simple connection between the two is what leads Rashi to the definition of Kedoshim Tiyu, have a Prushim Mina Arayot. The Ramban differs from Rashi. The Ramban says that Kedoshim Tiyu is not restricted to one particular area of halacha, namely that pertaining to sexual immorality, but is much broader than that. Says Ramban, in my opinion, not like Rashi. Prishut is the term that is used everywhere in the Talmud, the Chachme HaTalmud, or as we call them, Chazal, had a name. They were called the Prushim, in English the Pharisees. Why were they called Prushim? Because they were separatists. And in what sense were they separatists? And now the Ramban will define it. The Torah forbade uh, in sexual immorality and foods that are prohibited. Vehetira habia ish bishto yachila tabasa vahayain. But the things that Torah permitted, Torah permitted uh, husband and wife to cohabit. Torah also permitted the eating of kosher meat, kosher wine. Imkain himatze bal hatava makom liyot shituf. In this case, a person who is very meticulous about observing the laws of the Torah can find himself to be a, a lascivious person uh, with, uh, with his wife uh, making uh, extraordinary sexual demands upon her. Uh, or when it comes to food, being a glutton with meat and with wine. And he'll say, but everything is kosher. My wife went to mikvah. The meat has a hashgach of batats. The wine has the OU. What can be wrong? I'm doing everything that's kosher. Says the Ramban, says the Ramban, no, that's not kosher. That is not kosher. And, and, and foul speech. Nivul Peh, says the Ramban, is not kosher, even though the Torah makes no such prohibition. And one who conducts himself in this manner, says the Ramban, 
Rishut Torah. In Nabal means a vile person within the territory, within the confines of the Torah. This is what he is, a Nabal. So the Ramban is saying that the concept of Kedusha means uh, having restraint even from things that are permitted to you. Uh, where, whereas Rashi limits the Kedoshim to you, area of sexual morality, the Ramban broadens the horizon to cover almost every aspect of life. Namely, not to overdo, not to exaggerate in the things that are permitted to us, that there has to be a degree of separation. That's what the word Kedusha means. It means separation. These are the words of the Ramban. There's a totally different explanation that is given by Prabhupada Sifurno. Prabhupada Sifurno was a great 16th century uh, Chacham who lived in Bologna, Italy. And his uh, commentary to Sifurno is found in many, many Chumashim. And I'll quote from the Sifurno. He says as follows. <clears throat> We shall be holy. What is holy? How shall we be holy? Says the Sephurno. To be as godlike as possible. To be like Hashem. To whatever degree is humanly possible. This was the intention with the creation of men. As it says, Hashem says, let us make men in our likeness and in our image. And this is the meaning of Ki Kadosh Ani Hashem What does it say? Kedoshim to you, Ki Kadosh Ani Hashem You shall be holy, because I am holy. The way that you become holy is by being like me, by being holy like me. And says the uh, Sephurno, You should imitate me. What is known in Latin as imitatio dei. Imitate Hashem to whatever degree is humanly possible. These are the words of the uh, Sephurno. In other words, according to the Sephorno, Kedoshim Tihiyu means be like Hashem as much as humanly possible. And this mitzvah is actually found in the Torah in a number of places, not only in the words Kedoshim Tihiyu, but in other words as well. For example, we have in the Sefer Tavarim the following pasuk. But it's in, in Berek Kafchet, Hashem will make you for a holy nation. as he swore unto you. When you keep the mitzvot of Hashem, you shall walk in his ways. The nations of the world will see that the name of Hashem is called upon you, and they will fear you. Meaning, if we walk in the ways of Hashem, if we become godlike, if we conduct ourselves in a godly way, the nations of the world will be afraid of us, they will not attack us, there will not be terrorist attacks. This is the promise made by Hashem. On what, on what condition? Halachta bidrachav. Walk in the ways of Hashem. Rambam in Hilchot Deyot, chapter 1, Halacha He and Vav, writes as follows. So you know the Rambam talks about the Shvil HaZahav, the golden path, take the middle path, not to go to extremes. 
והם הדרכים הטובים והישרים, these are the good and direct paths, שנאמר, how do we know that we should take the middle path? Because it says, יאלכת בדרכיו, shall walk in his ways. כך למדו בפירוש מצווה זו, this is how החז"ל understood this מצווה. ההוא נקרא חנון, הפתה היה חנון. ההוא נקרא רחום, הפתה היה רחום. Just as Hashem is compassionate, so shall you be compassionate. Just as Hashem is merciful, so shall you be merciful. מהו נקרא קדוש? אתה היה קדוש. Just as Hashem is holy, so shall you be holy. ועל דרך זה קראו הנביאים לקהל בכל אותן הכינויים, and this is the terms, the various terms or attributes that the נביאים, the prophets use, reference to Hashem, ערך הפיים, long suffering, ורב חסד, very loving kindness, צדיק, ישר, תמים, גיבור, חזק, etc, 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 להודיע שהן דרכים טובים וישרים. These are the right ways in which to walk. חייב אדם להנהיג עצמו בהן ולהידמות אליו כפי כוחו. And therefore a person should imitate these ways as much as he can to the best of his ability. And uh, this is Rav Ravich of Zatzal explained uh, why does the Torah begin with Bereshit Bara Elohim? Uh, the Torah is a book of halacha, a book of mitzvot. Uh, it's not a book of history uh, or archaeology or anthropology. Why does the Torah have to tell us Bereshit Bara Elohim et Hashemayim v'et Haaretz? Similar to the question raised by Rashi, first Rashi, the Chumash. But, but the Rav Zatzal gave the following answer. Just as Hashem is a Borei Olam, we have to be Borei Olam. Hashem is a creator, and we have to be creators as well. We have to find ways to be creative. And that is what the lesson of creation teaches us. Be like the Borei Olam, the creator of the world. Rambam in Mor Nevuchim, again, the conclusion, again, that's to show how important this concept is, the Rambam concludes the three sections of the Mor Nebuchim uh, with the following words, it's chapter 54. He says, This is what I want, says Hashem. This is what I want. I want to see in you, says Hashem, Chesed, Tzedakah, and Mishpat Ba'aretz, and justice. As we explained with the Shlosha Srein Mito, the 13 attributes of mercy. The intent is that we should imitate these Mido, these attributes, and walk in those ways. Imkain Hakavana, Shezer Chabaze Patsuk. What is the ultimate perfection of man? To understand Hashem to the best as humanly possible. We are very limited, of course. How can the finite comprehend the infinite? It's not possible. But if we cannot understand the essence of Hashem, we can, to a certain degree, understand the attributes of Hashem. And that's what we are enjoined to, to learn and to study and to know. And also to try to understand as much as we can, how does Hashem guide the world, direct the world? Why do things happen? What, how is Hashem involved in the world? Hashem is involved in the world. And it's for us to discover in what ways is Hashem involved in the world. And, and continues the Rambam. And to walk with that conception, with that knowledge, when we understand this, we will live a life of kindness and charity 
and justice. Lihidamot bapulot velokat. To imitate the ways of Hashem. To imitate yodei. To be like Hashem is humanly possible. This is the idea of Kedoshim Kihiyu, thou shalt be holy. There's a very interesting Gemara in uh, Mesechet Rosh Hashanah in reference to the 13 attributes of mercy, Hashem Hashem Kelvachum Mechanun. And just before the 13 attributes, it says, Vayavo Hashem al Panav Vayikra. Vayavo Hashem al Panav Vayikra. And says the Gemara, Hashem passed before his face and he called out. Whose face? Was it Hashem's face or Moshe's face? So this is what the Gemara says. Omar of Yochanan, Ilmalei Mikra Katuv, it was not written in the Torah, Ev Shal Omro. We would not be allowed to say this. Kodesh who wrapped himself in a talit like a shliach tzibur. Heralo lemoshe seidet tefila, and he showed Moshe Rabbeinu how to pray. Amalo ozman shi Yisrael chotim. Whenever the Jewish people sin, yasu lefanai kaseid hazeh. Let them do this order, meaning the thirteen attributes of mercy. Hashem Hashem kel rachum mechanun. And I will forgive them. What I find very interesting is that Rabbi Yochanan uses the verb They shall do before me. It doesn't say He's not saying pray the 13 attributes. That's not enough. That is not going to bring about forgiveness. But do them, act that way, conduct yourself in the way of the 13 attributes. That is what will bring forgiveness. That is what Hashem is saying to Moshe Rabbeinu. In the Gemara Masechet Shabbat, at Daf Kuflam and Gimel Amid Bet, we have a very interesting breakdown. What is the meaning of the Pasuk, Ze Keli Vianvehu? This is my God. Vianvehu. How do we translate the word Vianvehu? It's a difficult word to translate. So we have two opinions in our Brayta. First opinion is that of the Tanakhala. Vianvehu hitna'er nefanav v'mitzvot. In other words, Anvehu, the shoresh of Anvehu is na'er. Na'er means beautiful. So when you do a mitzvah, do a mitzvah in a beautiful way. Asilafanav Sukana, a beautiful suka, the Lulavna and a beautiful Lulav, Shofana and Sitsitna and Sefetorina and Octobolishmo, Bidiona and when you write a Sefer Torah, use good quality ink, the Kumusna and with a very good quality quill, the Lavla, Uman, and the scribe should be an expert. And when you wrap the Sefer Torah, wrap it in very beautiful silks, again, to enhance the beauty of the Sefer Torah. So the definition according to the Tanakhama of the Anbehu is to beautify the mitzvot, na'eh. Abba Shaul has a different interpretation of the word bi'anbehu. He says bi'anbehu is a combination of two words, ani v'hu, I and he. So says Abba Shaul, v'anvehu, evi domelo, be like Hashem. Mahu chanun v'rachu, afatahi chanun v'rachu. Just as HaKadosh Baruch Hu is compassionate and merciful, so shall you be compassionate and merciful. It reminds me of the mitzvah of uh, Kibbut Avaim, honoring father and mother. What is the best way for a child to honor father and mother? Of course, if a child is obedient, if a child is 
helpful, uh, respectful, uh, the child is fulfilling the mitzvah of kibbutz avayim, honor your father and mother. But there's another way to fulfill that mitzvah. And that is when the child imitates its father and mother, when he wants to be just like father and mother, that is the greatest compliment that a child can pay to a parent. Imitate the parent. That's the greatest kavod, the greatest honor that a child can give. I want to be like you, mom, or I want to be like you, dad. This is the greatest compliment. That's the greatest kavod. And that's what we are doing when we imitate Hashem. We say, we want to be like you, Hashem. That's the greatest compliment that we could pay to Hashem. The last source is from a Sechet Sotada, you shall walk after Hashem. Is it possible for a human being to walk after the Hashem? Hashem is a consuming fire. How can you possibly walk after Hashem? How can you even get close to Hashem? So the answer is as follows. To follow the attributes of Hashem. Hashem gave clothing to the naked. When Adam and Chava realized that they were naked, who provided them with clothing? Hashem. You do the same. If you know someone who doesn't have the proper clothing to wear, or someone who doesn't have a nice winter coat on the cold winter days, give him clothing, give him something to wear. Not only that, HaKadosh Baruch Hu biker choli, HaKadosh Baruch Hu visited the sick, v'ikhtiv v'ayirah elav Hashem be'lonim amrei, afatav biker choli. When Avram Avinu was suffering from the operation of his circumcision, and he was in great pain, who came to visit? HaKadosh Baruch Hu came to visit, to be mevak v'chole. If Hashem does that, then we should do that as well. This is to be to be like Hashem, to imitate Hashem. Furthermore, it says, Hashem came to comfort the mourners. Where do we find that? After the death of Abraham, by and Hashem blessed his son Yitzchak. In what way did he bless his son? He came to comfort him. Yitzchak was sitting Shiva for his father. And who came to visit? Hashem came to visit. Hashem can visit the, the mourner. We can also visit the mourner. And finally, HaKadosh Bochu Kover Meitim Tichtiv Vaikboro Tobagai Hashem buries the dead. Who buried Moshe Rabbeinu? Shabbat was all alone when he died. Do you think that his body was left exposed to the elements, the animals? As for Shalom, Hashem came and buried Moshe Shabbat. Afata You too, if needed, you should bury the dead. All of these ways we are following in the path of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And in so doing, we are Elevating ourselves to the level of Kedusha. This is what holiness is. Holiness is to be godlike, to be a human being on whom the face of Hashem shines, where people could look at us and say, This person has godlike qualities. This is Kedusha, this is holiness. And uh, there's a, a brighter, uh, famous brighter in the Sechat Avod Zara, Dachav on the Bet, brighter of Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair, who says 
that bring different levels of spiritual growth. The uh, entire Sefer Mesilat Yisharim uh, is based upon this Brayta, and one of the statements is Tahara Mevi Midei Kedusha. Purity leads to holiness. That's exactly what we see uh, in our Torah portions. Portion of Shmini, Tazriya, Mitzora, beginning of Achremot, they all talk about Tahara, spiritual purity. All of this is an introduction leading up to the next level, and that's Kedoshim Tihiyu, who shall be holy. We begin with purity, purity, spiritual purity, your purity in our behavior, and then we come to a higher level where we become godlike. That's the meaning of Kedoshim Tihiyu. May we all be privileged to uh, elevate ourselves to every degree possible to that level of Kedusha. After all, this is why Hashem created us and this is why Hashem put us in this world. To be Godlike, to be the representative. So let me wish everyone uh, host Yom Atzmut Sameach. Uh, my sister, who's sitting in Florida, is still Yomat Smaut. So, I love it. Mazel. Yomat Smaut, so mer to you and Andy. And uh, Am Yisrael should, uh, should be able to enjoy peace and security and serenity. And the entire world should be uh, cured of this terrible, terrible virus. And Zrat uh, Hashem, that will happen soon. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. Thank you. Shalom.